Hey everyone, welcome to Match Points with USPTA. I'm Ramona Husaru and I'm super excited to be chatting today with Francis Tiafo. Francis, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So we have a lot of coaches watching at home that work with all types of players from recreation level all the way to possibly pro and they would love to learn more about your story. So can you share some of the things that you worked on as a junior player? What did you emphasize at that stage? I mean, as, as a junior player, I think it's so key to keep trying to get better and try to master all the shots. I think that's what helped me a lot, you know, from the finesse to the, you know, to the serve, to play on the baseline, um, to play defense and, and kind of just understanding the whole game. Um, I think walking tennis helped me more than anything. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of guys now, kids I see these days, just want to come out, hit the ball hard and they don't really have good strategy or really have good court sense. So I think, you know, tennis IQ is the most important. We know that you had great success early on. You won Orange Ball at 15, and then soon later you were playing already at pro level. You broke top 100 at 18. What were some of the things that you had to change from when you won Orange Ball when you start playing pros? Uh, yeah, serve. I'm a serve. I've saved my serve a lot. Right now, I'll probably say I'm serving the best of my life, but it, that, that's been a regression. The men's game, if you're not holding serve, you don't really have a shot. Um, you know, it's tough to you know break guys nowadays. So yeah, I mean that's been the biggest thing. And then and then just court positioning, you know, playing more aggressive. I mean, when I was younger, I was able to overpower guys sometimes, but then I also can get away with if I was nervous, I can hang back and just play defense. No one's gonna really hit through me, but you can't really do that. Throw guys at the ball too hard and too physical. So anytime you can take uh, initiative, you got to do so. So you've been now on the tour for about six years. You're playing a lot of tournaments, traveling a lot. What does it take to be able to perform at a high level on a consistent basis? It's not easy. Oh, it's too good. He's on fire here, Tiafo. It's not easy at all. I, I, I mean, consistency is tough. I mean, that's still something I'm, I've been trying to work on. I've, I've been, been able to keep a good ranking for some years now, but um, I think the biggest thing is just understanding who you are as a player and trying to maximize that. Excellent. So 2021 has been a really good year for you. You won Nottingham, you went finals in Vienna, uh, beat Rublev at the US Open. I think recently you did semifinals in Stockholm. What are some things that you did well this year that you're proud of? Yeah, I serve. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. I serve much better, a lot more aces, a lot more free points. Um, even if guys were making returns off my first serve, easy forehands. And then I'm coming forward much more. A lot of guys in the, in the men's game now, they play so good from the back, but you know, in the front court, they're not so comfortable. So bringing guys in with the short slice and, and me just having a presence, you know, I'm so athletic up there. That's, that's been one, one key I've been focusing on and it's helped me quite a lot. Excellent. So um, was there any point in your career when you were really successful as a junior player and maybe thought that you might be playing college or did you know it, that you're going directly to the pros? Yeah, I mean, I had eyes on, my, eyes on the prize, so it, it, it was pretty easy for me to make that decision and, and to chase that. Every day I was like, what do I need to do to be playing, you know, Roger and Rafa in the biggest stages, right? And what does that look like? And so, and I think a lot of guys are like, oh, well, you know, I'll go to college first. And you don't, your drive isn't the same because, I mean, if you're a good national player, you're going to go to any good college and university, I feel like. And, you know, when you really want to be the best in the world, you're going to put yourself like the best in the world would, right? So I think just the mentality of it uh, needs, needs to change a little bit, but. So if there's one thing that you would advise those players at home that are maybe in a position where they're playing really good tennis, but they're not sure whether or not to go to college, what would you say? I would say just, just, just wait and see, and see what happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you have the time, I mean, you, you gotta, I mean, you can make decisions as late as you want, or even maybe you can take a gap year. Like, re really, really, really try and do it and see if it's for you, or see if you need more time, or see if you can do it right away. But don't just be like, at like 16, yeah, I'm gonna go to school and, and kind of make that decision. Because I feel like then once people also commit, you know, they kind of relax and like, okay, like, well, you know, I, I have that in my back pocket. So many young Europeans that just, they, they just, I want to be a pro. And you have that in the back of your mind and that's why Euro, Europeans run tennis. And I don't think we have that mindset, but obviously it's a little different, but yeah, I mean, I just wish we had more of that. Good insight, good insight. Thanks so much. So you've worked with a lot of coaches throughout your career. Uh, what would you say was the best coaching advice that you have received? Honestly, honestly, probably, probably from probably from Wayne is that not trying to change the player, still be you, but let's tighten up the screws. And then ultimately, like you're only as good as your last match. So you know, a lot of times, you know, like I, I had a terrible thing where I would have a great tournament and then like a couple loose tournaments because I'm still like have, have riding that high from that last tournament where it's like. Look, man, like you made whatever quarters of a slam, but you lost like three, four rounds in a row. You're only as good as your last match, so no one cares that you, that you did that. It's a week, it's a week by week thing. 
And then as far as the game, um, you can make a million. You can make millions of dollars being on the baseline. You can be really, really broke playing way behind the baseline. So that was a, that was always a joke. Uh, one of my early coaches said. But yeah, I mean, play to win and, and not and not uh, be afraid to lose. Right? Like I'd rather I'd rather lose playing the right way than even even in the long run win playing the wrong way. Right? Because man, I can tell you so many players who was who was doing things the right way, hitting the ball hard, serving big as, as young, and I'm like, oh, this guy's playing terrible and not thinking. And now you know these guys are top ten in the world. Like when I was playing juniors with them, so yeah, I think I think always trying to play, you know, keeping yourself to the standard of I'm playing this way to get to that end goal. So very good, very good. So 2020 was a challenging year for all of us with the pandemic and all the tournaments that were canceled. What were some of the lessons that you learned from that experience? For me, it was like if if people around you aren't adding anything to you, I feel like they just gotta go. Like, and not in a bad way. Like you waste so much time trying to trying to f like fulfill other people's dreams or trying to like have have people around just to have them around. Like if people aren't really from your coach to your family to whatever the case may be. Like cause we got this short window, especially when I do in my career. And I, I need to I need to maximize it to the to the fullest. And you know if I'm not having everybody around me who has my full best interest or that can move me to where I'm trying to go, I just don't need it. And and that's kind of helped me a lot. I made some tough decisions and, and stuff like that. And that's kind of came and helped me play at the level I'm playing right now. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we're going to switch it a little bit on the fun side, talking a little about our superstitions. Do you have any? And would you mind sharing some of them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I used to, I'm trying to get out of there. I used to eat it. As, if I played in my first round match and I won at a dinner place, I had to eat at that same dinner place, try to get the same table. I'll talk to the manager of the, of the restaurant. Yeah, I'm here for the tournament. Be able to put me in the same table. Everyone's sitting in the same seat. It's just too much. Because then if something if something goes wrong, it's you're losing your head. Um, then same music before every every match. Um, uh, what about the collar? I used to the collar. <laughs> the collar is a big one. I like I tell Nike like I I play my best with the collars. Like I need I need the collars to to do well in the tournaments. It's funny, like I have Nike gave me like this whole last crack, they gave me eight of the collar shirts and eight of the non collar shirts. And with laundry sometimes when you finish late and they give it to you late and then I had to play with the, the non collar shirts and I'm freaking out, I'm like crying, I'm like, Yeah, I'm gonna lose. Like it's, it's I don't like, I'm gonna lose. Like and my coach is like, We gotta get out of this. So like Wayne Wayne's gonna kinda help me with that, but it's yeah, it, it gets it gets bad, man. It gets real bad. <laughs> Excellent. So you mentioned Wayne has helped you quite a bit lately. You've been working with him for about a year. What else has he added to your game that you're really proud of? Just uh, I mean I mean basically the mental side. Like how do we bring the best out of you each and every week? And then as I as I said, he's helped me a ton of my serve, getting my serve um, much better. And then he's he's also really enforced me trying to come forward and make guys, you know, pass me and hit tough shots. Um, th those those kind of things, but yeah, it's uh, the biggest thing we kind of preach is like making a choice, do it each and every day, and, and you know make the choice to be a competitor, make the choice to do things the right way, um, and hold yourself accountable. So really good, really yeah. good. All right, so we're now on match point. You're sending our coaches home with three things. What would be your three pieces of advice for them? Coaches, I want to see I want to see our guys, American players, play more with the continental grip. I think that's not approached enough nowadays. I mean, I feel like, because even, even there's some top guys in the tour now not with not great hands and kind of freak out if you kind of bring them in the front court. Enhance, enhance serve, like take the, take the serve part of the game very seriously. And then try to create the best athletes as you can and tell guys to always move, move, move with footwork aggressively and not defensively. Um, those are kind of my, part of my three things. Excellent. Thanks so much for taking the time. This was really great sharing some of your secrets. Yeah. We really, really appreciate it. We love watching you play. We love the energy, the heart. We're so excited what the future has for you. Best of luck for 2022 and we look forward to watching you play. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was it for today. I'm Ramona Husari. You've watched Match Points with USPTA. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.